So here we have it. The four basic equations that we can use to find the areas of almost all plane figures that we need to know about in school. I haven't included the ellipse and there might be one or two other shapes as well, but these are the basic ones. We have three, the square, the rectangle, the parallelogram, that behave like rectangles. We have the triangle, the kite and the rhombus that behave like half rectangles because we saw that a rectangle fits around them and they take up half the space. The trapezium, sorry I forgot to mention it's called a trapezoid in the United States. Uh, I might talk about the history of that in another video but in other English speaking countries it's called a trapezium. The area is the average length times the breadth, so you might think of it in terms of an average rectangle. And we saw that the circle itself can be divided up in a rather clever way into what is basically a rectangle. And we get the formula pi r squared. And all of these are written in square units. I'm not going to write square units on each, but r squared square units, so don't get it confused with 2 pi r. This is the formula to find areas, because we need a radius times a radius. A length times breadth, length times breadth, length times breadth. Well, how do we work out areas of sh basic shapes and how do we set the work out? This is the last part of this video. I'll do it very, very quickly. Let's choose a simple one. Let's choose a triangle. Uh, let's say it's 20 metres along the base and its altitude or height is 8 metres. So how do we find the area of this particular triangle? Because like all triangles, its area is half the rectangle that surrounds it. We use this formula and I encourage you to write the formula first. And as you write it, think it's half a rectangle. Please write area equals, don't leave this off and just start writing uh, chronumerals, and please don't leave all of this out and just start writing numbers. This is a good way to explain what you're doing, to explain what you're finding and how you're going to find it. So I'll write formula here. The second thing we do is substitute the values from the problem. Now you can see the length of this triangle is 20 and its breadth is 8, so we write 20 times 8 over 2. We'll call this substitute. Now does it matter whether we write 8 times 20 or 20 times 8? Does the order cause any problems? Well it doesn't because multiplication is what we call commutative and that means the order in which we multiply makes no difference to the answer we get. 20 times 8 and 8 times 20 give the same result. So that's nice, we don't have to worry that we've got it right, that we've got the order correct. Now we could do 8 times 20 and divide the answer by 2, but if you're a little bit fast, you realise that 2 actually divides into these numbers. 2 divides into 20 10 times, at least goes into itself once. And our answer is going to be 10 times 8 is 80, square metres or metres squared and here's our solution. This is a, a good way of setting your work out with three simple steps. I'm going to give one more example that's a little more complex just because the numbers aren't so nice uh, because there's one more thing I wish to share and that will be the end of our video. So please watch it. I think you'll find it useful. The next shape we're going to find the area of is this circle here. 
with a radius of 3.6 metres. How do we find its area? We use the formula for the area of a circle and write our formula first, area equals pi times the radius squared. We substitute. Now there's no need to substitute for pi. Your calculator knows the value of pi to quite a few decimal places. You could replace it with 22 over 7 or 3.14, which are not exactly the value of pi, just the very close approximations. But I'm going to use my calculator, so I'll leave the pi, and I'm going to multiply it by this 3.6 squared. By the way, in writing pi, if you get a Greek book or a Greek newspaper, or visit Greece, you'll find that pi is generally written with two straight lines and a straight line across. There's no need to make it fancy with little curls and twists and things. You can if you wish, but that's the basic way of writing pi. Very simple. Now, because this is a difficult number, it's not equal to exactly 3, it's 3 point something or other, we're going to use our calculator. Now, you'll excuse me if I wear my glasses. Uh, I type in pi times 3.6 squared equals, and this is the point I want to make with you, I want you to get in the habit of copying the calculator screen. Now, it takes just a few seconds, but I'll explain why. Let's write it first. I get 40.71504079. On my calculator. The reason I recommend doing this is the reason that examiners who mark our high school certificate in New South Wales complain almost every year that students are making mistakes because they calculate some value on the calculator and try to round it off as they copy it to the page. And when you're suffering stress in exam conditions, these two simple things to do when you do them at the same time, it's amazing how often you slip up. And it only has to be 1 out of 10, and you'll drop 10% of the, your marks for when you do these rounding off uh, problems. And frankly, I'd like to get 100% when I round off. So the simple act of writing this makes that a simple job. It's a bit of a no-brainer. You don't have to concentrate. Copy it out, then read the the uh, question in your textbook or in your exam paper and if they say they want the answer to one decimal place then say right we're going to cut it off after one number after the decimal and we're going to get 40.7 meters squared so breaking this into two steps is a very good thing indeed and you'll find that if you're fighting to get full marks in an exam this will help you get there. Also, if you want to be extra fancy, uh, this is not strictly true because we approximated pi to quite a few decimal places, but pi is actually an infinitely long decimal. So we approximated and we can write that these values are approximate. Uh, in some countries, you might write approximately as a sort of wavy equal sign, but I happen to like the one that's used in most parts of the world that is uh, made up of an equal sign with a dot above and below. But there it is. Very, very simple. Now, some quick comments. To memorise these four formulae, I recommend that you copy out this summary and that each afternoon when you get home, you have to get out a new sheet of paper, a blank sheet, and try to draw this summary up and compare it with your handwritten one that you've copied from here. And after a few days, you'll find that you can draw this absolutely perfectly with all the formula in place. It doesn't take very long at all. Literally a couple of minutes each afternoon for three or four afternoons or five afternoons. And then practice. Set your work out this way. Line your equal signs up. Explain that you're finding an area. And I think you'll find that you benefit enormously. A year or two ago, a niece of mine asked for help with finding areas. And I wrote her a, a rather full letter, which I've since typed up into a PDF file. 
and that PDF file contains an explanation of all that I've put here and uh, towards the end of it there is a page summarizing this material. So look for the link, it, I, I'm hoping the link will either be above the screen here as you're viewing it or in the description below the video. But download the PDF file and print off this page, it's quite free and, uh, and while I'm mentioning that there is a lot of other material being posted on my website and uh, there should be a link in one of the two places to that as well. Finally, let me just say that the following videos will cover uh, or explain how to find composite areas, how to use the trapezoidal rule, how to use Simpson's rule, and very basically explain what an integral is about, uh, all relating to length times breadth and finding areas. So that's it for me at the moment. It's been a lengthy journey, but I wanted to explain all the steps for you because if you've watched all this, the chances are that you'll remember it quite well indeed. Let me encourage you, please leave your uh, comments below the video if you have any pertinent comments to make. Please like the video and by all means subscribe so you get to find out when these next videos appear. Thank you for watching.